results and, and we'll do our best to put a, a webinar together. Uh, we might invite uh, specialists if it's, if it's a little bit out of our depth. But um, yeah, just feel free. You can do it at the end of this. You can, you can put a little note on if you like, whichever suits you and we'll do our best to accommodate. We have got uh, the, the next several planned already. So in two weeks time, we will be doing a, another one and uh, two weeks after that, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, um, cheers. I'm uh, enjoying a nice glass of uh, milk this evening. Um, just had a bit of a training session, so hence uh, the wet hair still and recovery drink. So I'm gonna enjoy this glass of milk. Thank you very much for helping to produce it. And I'm gonna hand over to Lizzie who will tell us much more about the Laley Meteor. Thank you. Over to you, Lizzie. Thank you, thank you Lawrence. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, tonight, I bring you the third webinar that we have um, in our series. And I have the privilege of introducing you to the Laley Meteor. It's a new product to do with Foot Healthcare. Um, so it's quite exciting to be able to bring this to you. So without further ado, I'm going to get on. Um, hang on a second. So, Tonight's topics, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to who I am, importance of foot health, common foot health problems, the cost implication with poor foot health, Laley Meteor zero tolerance strategy, um, Laley Meteor itself, the mobile sprayer, care products, care spray and application of these, the Meteor um, support and FMS support that you get with this, some results and also a farm review and there is questions at the end but if you do have any during the presentation Please just shout and um, we'll do our best to answer those. So, just a bit about me for those who are watching who don't know. My name is Lizzie Mercer. I am um, 24 years old. I live on a mixed farm in Dasher. So, we have beef animals and we were milking dairies till 2017. Um, we have a few remaining animals now. Um, I've had a fully agricultural education. So, I went to agricultural college and then did degrees in agriculture. Um, Throughout, basically, I've always been very passionate about agriculture, and particularly dairy industry. Um, I've worked on the home farm, which I still do. I've worked on block carbon units, and for those of you in Cheshire or the surrounding areas, I used to work at Beast and Animal Health, which is across from the market. Um, outside of um, working for Laley and everything else, I do a bit of young farmers, Holstein young breeders, and generally farming, and I have a passion for good breeding. Um, we were. When we milked, we were pedigree Holsteins, and I'm very much still very passionate about that. A good cow is a good cow, whatever colour they are. So I'll get on now. Um, I've put this slide in here because I think we need to understand the importance of foot health. Um, anybody wanting to improve yields in the dairy industry must start at the bottom. And maybe not yield at the moment, but certainly efficiency. And um, effectively, a cow is a bulk tank on legs. If she can't get to the feed fence, if she can't go to the parlour, if she can't go to the robot, you're not going to get maximum production out of it and ultimately that pays the bills and um, so it's very important and also really interesting figure that i found was worldwide about 23 percent of dairy cattle experience lameness issues and that is just under a quarter of the whole global dairy herd which is massive figure and just shows the importance of trying to combat lameness um, because there's a lot of production losses there and a lot of things that we could um, improve so the importance of foot health and foot health is among the top three reasons for disposal on a dairy farm after mastitis and reduced fertility. And they all sort of have um, a knock on effect with each other because if you've got a cow that's not comfortable to show signs of heat for whatever reason on a feet in a concrete yard, um, there's going to be more open space because you haven't been able to catch that heat. Um, and also if she's laid in a cubicle and she's not getting out of that cubicle, it's going to compromise her other hygiene, which ultimately could lead to mastitis. We all have um, knock-on effects and if we are to get hoof care right and we do um, zero tolerance strategy you can expect some real good results um, and in terms of robotics there's fewer collect cows um, with all dairy units there will be less veterinary costs less antibiotics which is really important lower insemination costs less work in the shed and cows will be comfortable to show signs of heat um, which will improve higher average age of your herd and ultimately maximise potential production which when we spend a lot of time um, getting these cows from calves to cows and then we need that return on investment so we want them to live as long as possible so it's really essential 
Um, common foot problems, and you'll see in the average here, there's a high percentage of cows with sole ulcers, dermatitis, inflammation, and white line. And this is caused by a multitude of factors. Um, and before we even talk about environment and nutrition and irregular foot treatment, irritability has a massive effect on uh, poor foot health. So we're up against it before we even start to manage these cows. Um, sole ulcers, it's got a 30% chance of passing it on to the next generation. Um, digital dermatitis, 22% chance, and corns between the feet, 35% chance. And we breed cows generally, for, we try to get higher milk yields, um, and digital dermatitis has the same amount of heritability as milk yield. So we really need to manage these cows properly to eliminate the um, risk of these. Um, so a regular foot treatment um, is one obvious cause of common foot problems. Um, environment is also one, you know, if you've got cubicle passages that aren't being scraped as often as they should, it's a great environment for digital dermatitis, but not such a great environment for the cow. Um, and nutrition has massive effects. Um, cows with um, low rumen pH have soft feet, which can allow for sole ulcers, etc. And also if they've got too high a protein in the diet, they're susceptible to laminitis. So there's real a lot of issues that can happen um, and a nice study here has measured the actual amount of lameness and it's very hard to measure that but they've come out with an estimated 50 percent of cows um, in herds have lameness problems in any 12 month period and that is a lot of you know it's a very startling figure really um, and there's a study there that 24 percent of herds have digital dermatitis sorry not 24 94 percent of herds have digital dermatitis which is almost all herds. Um, so it's obviously quite a big problem. Um, so with the problems, you have the cost implications. When we get there. Okay, yeah, sorry. Cost implications of foot treatment. And so herd health problems are often underestimated. Um, in New Zealand, there was a study that showed that 25% of hoof diseases are swatted by dairy farmers. That means the actual amount um, compared to the actual amount, which is a lot of cows that aren't being seen. And research was um, done at Cornell, in Cornell University and it's shown that 20% of cows on average um, on a dairy farm are lame and that results in a direct or indirect cost which lies between 250 to 380 euros per cow, which is quite significant. There's obviously a knock-on effect with milk production and you can see losses of up to 5.5 kilos per day. This does depend on the level of lameness but it's, it's still a massive production loss and we are always getting paid for um, the milk so anywhere we can gain that back is, is good. So um, fertility is also affected and there's been multiple studies that have found that um, with lameness can put additional days on um, to first service, which is seven. You've got 30 days, additional days open, 20% um, lower conception rates, and this results in 1.2 more services per conception. So it's got big effect. Um, the average cost, um, this is a nice study that's been put together by AHDB, and they have looked at in terms of treatment, loss of yield, and potential. Um, shortened production life, it's going to cost per cow in the region of £180. And with the average herd size at the moment, as a fina financial loss of nearly £15,000, um, which can be equated to a cost of what, well over one pence per litre of milk produced on farm, which is very, very significant. Um, so, leads us on to the next slide. A bit of a go slow tonight. Okay, so I'll put this slide here. I think it's great to take a bit of perspective because um, we often refer to dairy cows as athletes, and so we should because they, you know, they have to maintain their own body weight, they have to maintain a pregnancy, and um, we want them to produce vast amounts of milk. Um, and if you look at an athlete um, such as Usain Bolt or Mo Farah, you would never see them competing with sore feet or injuries and if they did they would not compete to their full potential. So why should we if we don't aid a cow to do this expect it to? It's very important that we do um, sort foot problems out because cows are definitely not going to produce as much as they should um, without proper treatment. 
so that takes us on to the whole philosophy that the Laylee Meteor um, has. So that's zero tolerance. And um, the old adage, prevention is better than cure. Um, so the, the unique um, approach that the Laylee Meteor has is an all round solution and it's to limit hoof disease from A to Z. So it works um, from calves, high cows and milking cows. So it is the whole herd and all factors that affect hoof health are reviewed. Um, so in, it can be in terms of management practices, the housing, feeding, everything is reviewed to try and get to the ultimate um, what you want for your, her your herd and their feet and get to the best possible scenario. Um, and this is structured um, and it's a well-defined approach aided by our farm management support team. Um, so once you do go under this zero tolerance approach, you're not alone, there is our farm management support there. And it's unique as well because each individual cow is reviewed, treated, um, and she goes through the whole process as an individual. Unlike a foot bath where cows can be walking through the remnants of their 100 herdsmates, this is individual tailored to her. So it's quite effective. Um, it starts off with corrective hoof care, and is, um, once that, you know, you can analyse what cow has what problem, it then becomes preventative. Um, to ensure that there is healthy health throughout, healthy, healthy hooves throughout the herd. Um, so the total hoof health program focuses on all animals, as I said. Um, and number one, you identify the hoof diseases, and you apply efficient curative treatment. And then after that, to keep up the zero tolerance approach is regular preventative treatment. And there are three pillars to this: there is zero tolerance, hoof care products, and uh, Lely Meteor mobile and automatic sprayer itself. And there's a really fantastic drawing on the right here, which basically picks the whole process and you go from your zero tolerance, so you're analyzing which cows have which problems, you go to your corrective treatment, then your preventative, and whether that be Laylee Meteor mobile sprayer or the Laylee Meteor automatic sprayer, um, you will get that cow back on her feet, quite literally. Um, and then during this period, um, we sort of like to work with health um, care specialists to then get the optimum result. So, um, as I've said before, we like to, with all the cows, you know, pick up their feet and identify hoof diseases which are present. Um, so, by this, we'll clean the hooves and then you diagnose the problem. And by that, you can then inspect and write down exact issues because you need to know exactly what issues you have in the herd if you're going to do this with a zero tolerance strategy. Um, and you go to curative treatment. So and we totally understand that there is herds out there and the majority of herds have already got a good treatment regime and they know exactly what's going on. Um, so this can be part of that. And um, once you've been able to identify the suspects and you can curatively treat them, and we recommend that you trim the hooves a minimum of twice a year, and then um, you've got the tools to aid you with treating those cows. And then number three goes on to regular, regular preventative treatment. Um, and the goal with this is to keep the hooves healthy and in a good state for a long period. Um, and one thing, again, which is unique, is cleaning those feet. So as I will um, state a bit later on, with the meteor, feet are washed. Um, and they are cleaned before the disinfectant goes on. And that is unique because in a foot bath, a cow will just walk, unless you volume wash those cows' feet in the parlour or wherever you are, um, a cow will walk into a foot bath with dirty feet, which means that the disinfectant isn't going to be as effective as it could be or whatever you have in that foot bath. So with the meteor, you have got that cleanliness, and as it says, 90% of bacteria and dirt are flushed away with cleaning. Um, and also you have that drying time. So while that cow is being milked, it allows um, Laylee wash spray to stick to the feet and that is better efficacy for the care spray when that comes along after the cow is finished milking. So it allows you to keep the bacteria low. Add. Um, so i just put this slide in here. It's a solution tailored to the individual farm. Um, and was at Laylee Midlands and our farm management support, Lady Sam and Izzy, um, they will help you along with how you can tailor it to your individual farm because we understand everybody is different and everybody at the moment has different uh, regimes. 
So it's um, not one suit all. It's it's you know definitely individual to your farm, and we can help you through that. And it's just a matter of having a chat and sitting down and seeing what would be the best solution for you. So we get to the Lady Meteor itself. Um, so there is, as you can see, where my cursor is, the Lely Meteor um, single type two. So that is one control unit and that services one spray bar. And then you've got the Lely Meteor Duplo, which is one control unit and that services two bars. Um, and as you can see, you've got the care tube here and that has to be a maximum um, four meters away from the control unit. And then you have um, the wash tube, which has to be a maximum 30 meters away from the control unit. Um, so that's a little bit about the uh, Meteor itself and the single unit. And I'll just go on to inside the clean room. So if there's any of you envisaging your clean room right now and seeing how it would fit in there, you can see from this, um, the control unit just has to fit on a wall. It has to be able to hold 50 kilos of weight. Um, you'll have your Meteor hairspray and your Meteor wash spray close by. Um, and then there is the bar by here and you can see the cattle walk in walk over it not causing any um any problems with cow flow etc it's quite neatly into a clean room um, and then there is a bit of a sequence of events when um meteor is working so the cow will visit the robot and um he will walk in and her hooves will then be washed and they'll be washed with 1.2 liters of water per milking and not 0.1 percent of Lily Meteor wash spray and the wash spray is what allows the um, disinfectant to stick to the feet a lot more efficiently. And so once um, her feet have been washed, the brief treatment of the teats will begin, section of teat te te cups and then she will be milked. Um, then there is removal of teat cup, be sprayed and then the hoof um, disinfectant is then applied. This um, with the disinfectant being applied just after milking, there's no contamination of the milk. Um, and the hoof uh, disinfectant is around 10 mil of solution. Um, and then the cow leaves the robot. And at the moment this works in an every cow, every milking every day, or every cow, every milking every other day fashion. Um, that's a little bit about your lady meteor. And then we go on to the mobile sprayer. Just thinking about it. Bear with the computer, it's um, on a bit of a go slow. Um, okay, we'll not go to move on today, but we'll go to the key benefits to the cow. So we have a cow there, and um, one really important thing it does not increase box time. So if there's any people um, quite you know, worried about the free time, and a lot of people will be anyway, it does not increase box time. So um, you're not going to be slowing that robot down. It's individual targeted treatment that's keeping the utmost hygiene, which I explained before, um, is just for that cow. She's not leaving the robot and then having to walk for a foot bath, which her herd mates have walked through. You know, that could have been chained, say, 100 cows ago, which at that time it won't be as efficient treatment as it could have been um, with this cow. So this um, treatment is, is effectively like a cow walking through a foot bath the first time, she's getting the optimum result. Um, and there is, importantly, no obstruction to the robot. So as you can see in this picture, these cows are loitering in front of the robot. If there was a foot bath here, they wouldn't be allowed to do that. And if there was a foot bath there, sometimes cows can be reluctant to go through. So there's no obstruction with the meteor. A little infrastructure as well, because you don't need any gate works here. Your bar is just fitted on the end of uh, the robot, and that's it for the cow side. Um, and it ties into the principle of free cow traffic because um, there's no effect on cow flow. It is just as it would be if there wasn't a meteor bar there. And which is quite nice, there is no copper sulf sulfate or formalin. Um, and so the product is non irritant and it's no negative effect on visits to the robot, which is really important. Um, here we are, here's a mobile sprayer. So this is um, the Lely automated sprayers ally and this allows you to spray the heifers and the dry cows and also the front feet so it's the other side of the uh, zero tolerance package 
Um, it's a driven unit that sprays warm water and then it will be able to treat the cows. Um, this is with a long spray one, so it's quite safe for the user. Um, and the concentration is set to a default configuration of 15%. And as I said, it's uh, intended for young stock and dry cows. And um, with organ intention, it should be done at least once a week to get maximum effect. So, um, along with the Meteor Sprayer, the FMS, and everything else, there is care products. And they are very, they're, you know, the most important parts. Um, along with the automated solutions. So um, they've been carefully developed to be effective and sustainable. Um, Bailey, as you'll know, is a company made in the Netherlands and antibiotics are banned from foot baths in the Netherlands. And this is why they've had to come up with another um, way of treating cows. Um, so the ingredients are all sustainable and the products are all free from aggressive ingredients um, and they comply with the standards of our time. So they are ready for which is really good because we never know in this country when formalin may be banned. Um, so there's always something there ready to take off in the future. Um, with the care products, there's always FMS help. It's accompanied by training instructions and manuals. Um, and as I said, the care products are preventative and corrective. So you've got both levels. Um, and with this, you can have different types of kits which aid you um, treating the cows. As you can see on this right hand side, you get bits like this, um, and they have roof blocks, glue, stuff like that, um, to treat the cows. Okay, so the meter care spray, and this is the spray that is administered after milking um, onto the feet. So, this is the treatment, and um, this is disinfecting the hooves and reducing pathogens to a minimal. Um, the efficacy of this product is enhanced. Um, the wash spray to start with because it allows it to stick better when that cow walks out the robot she isn't going to lose any of that it's going to stick in those feet and um, it's tested and proven it's registered in relevant countries um, and so the Lily Amita care spray is made of butorod hide and ordinary ammonium compounds and this product is free from formaldehyde and how this works it's effective against gram positive and gram negative bacteria fungi and how it combats the uh, fungi is it denatures the protein of the bacteria so effectively it kills it and that's exactly what we want it does it in a natural sustainable way um, and it's good for the cow and also good for the farmer because um, a foot bath with formalin isn't the best thing to be around um, so the Lely uh, Meteor Care Spray it must be diluted to be a usable solution and uh, concentration and application is 5 10 so it comes in a 50 litre drum and you put 3.5 Kilograms of care spray in there. So this is just a bit about the components and what's in there. It's got a blue grey clear appearance, um, general storage guidelines. It is sensitive to cost, it's got a shelf life of 12 months. And um, you can see the pH and the concentration, which I've talked about before, you use 10 mil concentration per milking. Um, then yeah, we talk about farm management support and the customer care you'll receive. It isn't um, a product that you will just on your farm and then have to deal with yourself. There's a lot we want to this work, um, zero tolerance strategy does take a lot and we understand that. So with the support of our farm management people, um, we hope we can work with not only farmer, but the hoof care specialist and exchange the knowledge that we have with our products and enhance the experience and the cows feet the optimum potential. And we do this by drawing up farm specific protocols um, and that is with the advice from the foot trimmer because we recognise that foot trimmers, they will know herds of cows, they've been there for a long time um, generally. So, you know, what we can do together, we can um, really make the most out of the, the approach. Um, so protocols, they can work with time management, treatment planning, care methods, um, and we set and, we set and um, set goals together and reach them. So um, it's always checking the performance and making the most out of the package. Um, and also um, FMS can provide help with the link to see when it is available. Um, so yeah, there's uh, a lot of support there and throughout the stage from initially purchasing the product to um, 12 months later, it will be there along the way. Um, which this little graph explains. Um, so one, two, three, and four, this is um, basically making the farmer aware of 
um, his foot health on farm. It's an initial meeting that will be set prior to the start and it's a specific business discussion. Um, and then you go to stage one and um, this is where you will initially find out which cows have poor feet, what sort of conditions are on farm and get a really comprehensive view of the farm. Um, and the zero tolerance policy is then implement, implemented. Um, number six is about a week later um, and it's followed up by FMS to see how it's going, to see if you're still sticking to the approach um, and if results are being seen. And then by week seven, um, there's a bit of an interim evaluation to discuss the progress um, and see how you know the zero tolerance start of the process is going on. And then you go to stage two, where hopefully this is um, you're going to see the results of the initial hard work that you've put in. Um, and it's more to get most out of it and see um, what sort of strategies you want to carry on with. Um, so those results is what we'd like to see if zero tolerance strategy is stuck to. Okay, so um, it's one of our farmers who has a meteor and this is his view. It's a bit of a vague view but no signs of digital dermatitis with the cows on the meteor and why he said that was he has four robots and three of them have foot baths on and they are manually filled and then he's just purchased an A5 so he wanted to try something different with that and he's put the meteor in there but the cows are all one as run as one group so he has um he's seen the cows that tend to stay with the a5 in that area you have little signs of digital dermatitis but what he does know is that he doesn't have to fill up the, you know foot bath with the meteor he has that less labor and you know if he's not there um or he hasn't filled it up as he wanted to as he intended to the meteor is still going so in terms of um uh, cow's feet and his labour requirements definitely um, saved him and he wouldn't go back with another for that so that's uh, quite positive um yeah so that's about it from me and i think it was um, a bit of introduction to the meteor but if you've got any questions please fire them my way and i'll try and answer them if not my number's there and um you can you know ask any member of the lady midland scheme and we will help you out thank you for listening Fantastic, thank you, Lizzie. That was uh, very in depth and uh, yeah, very useful uh, bit of kit there. We will uh, just give it a couple of uh, moments to see if there's any questions. I'll see if there's any on the on the chat. There was a question there. Is anyone who wants to ask a question on the chat, that's also fine. I'll keep my eye on, on that. Or if anyone want, just wants to unmute themselves and ask a question, that's also absolutely fine. Yeah, feel free. Just to, 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 to pose a, a query, um, Lizzie, the yeah. installs that we've done so far, yeah. what... What's the length of time for an install? How long does it take? Half a day? Two days? Well, obviously, because it is working with an astronaut and we don't want to um, you know, reduce any time that the cows can have contact, we try and do it as quick as possible. Um, so, um, with it, certainly putting the bar in there, it wouldn't take so long. But most of the work is on the theme room side, so it's not going to affect the cows too much. But yeah, when you have to install the bar, obviously the robot will stop. So, we try to be as minimal time with the robot, you know, reducing cows as, as possible. So I would say half a day, but, um, <clears throat> but um, yeah, I could get back to anybody who wanted to know because every farm is slightly different. Okay, superb. We've got another question coming for you. Um, yeah. What's the cost of the mobile unit? Um, I'll have to get back to whoever that is. Um, I'm not sure personally. Okay, so we'll we'll check on that and uh, and come yeah. back to to you. We've got another uh, question for you, Lizzie. Um, is the meteor available on the small grant scheme? Um. 
So I know automatic foot baths are. So, um, it's one of those things that you probably have to inquire with RPA or RPW, whoever your grant person is, and ask them if um, you know if it fits in the specification because it is an automated piece of um, you know they should be advocating money towards that because I know with all the projects we've had, we've managed to if you do speak to the grant authorities and you explain what it is, they then will. Um, you know, we can sort something out. So, as I'm aware, it's not in the handbook at the moment, but it is a new product, and they are a bit slower to catch on with that. So, it's something you'd have to speak to the grant authority about. But I'm sure that there'll be funding in the future available. Okay, is there something we can do to um, push it forward? Can we get in contact and do anything? Yeah, definitely, possibly, we can look at. Um, what the specification says at the moment, and then um, we can say we've got a product that would definitely apply for this. It's technology, it's uh, cow welfare, and I should think it would be eligible. So yeah, we can definitely do that because we've done it with other products. So there is room there. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, um, any other questions? We've got uh, a couple on the chat. Uh, which have now been uh, answered apart from the, the price, which we'll, we'll, we'll get back. Hiya. Um, yeah, hello. Hi, it's Roger. Hi, Roger. Hi. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Um, have you got any, any idea how much the chemical costs? Uh, I can get back to you on that, Roger. Yeah. Because it comes in, um, there is obviously, just like it, it comes in a smaller bottle and then it'll come in a larger one. It all depends. I can get you a price, that's no problem. Yeah, it, it would be interesting to know the price of the unit and yeah. the running cost of it. Yeah. yeah, we can get you that information. Uh, yeah. Thank you very can much. This unit... Sorry. Is, is that a question from Baz? Uh, no, it's from Wally. Ah, uh, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Um, can this be installed on A3s, A4s, and A5s? Yes, it can. Okay. Yeah. Um, how often is the cow sprayed? At every milking or once per time? So it is every cow, every milking, um, or every cow, every other milking. Every day, sorry. But, um, so at the moment, it's sort of, there's a two options, but... Um, I'm sure Lely are going to make it that they can, or they're exploring, developing, that they can make it so you can tailor it to that, you know, the individual cow or cows with issues. So it's more okay. efficient. Okay. Um, the, Does that your question? The automatic sprayer at the robot, what, uh, well, maybe it's a little specific. I'm just trying to think, what was the trigger for the spray at the very start? Like, where does it get its signal? So we'll know the cow has entered the box, the gate will be shut, so she cannot get out, and then there'll be a certain um, period of time where it will then know she's in position and be able to spray her feet. Okay. All right. Thank you. No worries. Have we got any more questions? Ah, um, yeah, so I imagine you could scale it back to every other milk and once you get digit under control, yeah. Yeah, that was our thought. Yeah, if you've got yeah. any questions, my number is on the screen, so please, you know, give me a call. And whoever needs that price, I'll give it, I'll get back to them. Yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've asked if um, it's all right if we get back to them, Lizzie, so. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, any other questions for, for Lizzie on the uh, Meteor? It's, um, you know, it's a fairly new product, so we are getting to grips with it ourselves and trying to make it more effective for the farmer. So, um, yeah, it's uh, watch this space, I think. Yeah, superb. Well, thank you, Lizzie, and uh, thank you to everyone for taking uh, time to listen. Um, it is recorded, so if anyone needs a, a copy or for it to be passed on to foot trimmers and to ask what their thoughts are, etc., that's no problem. Um, and then stay tuned for the next one in two weeks. And... Um, Thank you again.
Have a, have a great evening, what's left of it, and uh, thank you for attending. Up next, on the 17th of June. Ah. Yeah, which one's that, Lizzie? So it's project planning and bond design for Optimum Cowflow. So it'll be a really good one for any people looking in how it'll fit their bonds at the moment. If you haven't got robot, it'll be great for that. And if you have got robot, hopefully we can give you some refreshes or some points um, about planning anything in the future. Brilliant. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. And thank you, Lizzie. Thank yeah. you. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thanks for joining. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. That was really good, Lizzie. Oh my god. Well done, Lizzie. It was really good. Is that I Fran? Don't know. I don't know. Fran, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Hi, how are you, Roger? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good, good. How are you getting on? Yeah, not too bad. Just uh, the shed flow does change a bit when the cows go out. It's a little bit, I don't know how to describe it. Um, I, I do like the routine in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. yeah. Have you I'll had that range with then? those prices? Say again, sorry, Lizzie. I'll get back to you with those prices. Very good, thank you. No worries. All these questions put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first question the farmer's going to ask, isn't it? How much is it? Exactly, yeah. I was waiting for it. I was. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. yeah. Thank you for attending. It's brilliant. No worries. So yeah, we had that bit of rain today, which was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely yeah. help things. Definitely gonna help things along. I know. I'd quite like some more, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I think we will. Um, it looks a bit more daggly for the next two weeks, is not it? So. Yeah. So I'm gonna do that blistering sun back. Definitely. Um,